Good morning, pumpkin. Say good morning. It's not gonna be morning by the time this video comes out. Where are you going? Why are you showing everybody your pumpkin, pumpkin? You don't wanna say hi? No? Okay, that's fine. It's hyperactive morning time. Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff, your tropical plant party. How's everybody doing? I hope you're good. I'm great. There's a nice shot. Time to do a Q and A. I was gonna go outside to do this, but it's actually kind of chilly. It's only like 40 degrees right now, so I'm gonna wait. Um, I'm not, I'll put this up on the screen. So I've been getting a fair amount of questions. It's normal, plant channel, lots of plant questions. And uh, sometimes those questions are just a bit much to answer in the comment section, cause it just, it can take a very long time to give a thorough answer. So I thought I'll go ahead, pull a few, we'll talk about them in a video. Might be things that are useful for other people to know too, right? I'm standing too close to the door. You wanna go out there? It's cold. All right, fine, I'll put on pants. Forgot I was supposed to move some of the annuals in last night, but um, they seem okay. It worked out all right. They're close to the ground. They stayed warm enough. It only got down to like 38, I think. I don't know. Anyways, I have a combination of questions here that range from houseplants to tropicals. The first question though is relevant to this hydrangea tree right in front of me. So the question is from the only hatchet 101 on the planting more hydrangea trees, gardening with clay and waterlogged soils video. Vlog from last summer, I believe. Anyways, they asked, hello, great video. Oh, thank you. How old are the two vanilla strawberry hydrangea trees in the back? And what did I do to make them so full? So those are, a few years old gosh i don't know maybe i think i put them in probably four years ago so this will be their fourth year that i've had them and they're paniculata the paniculata type hydrangea trees this is one of them right here there's a strawberry vanilla right in front of me they get very big and full and that's actually why it's kind of nice why certain companies have come out with like the bobo and the limelight and well limelight still gets pretty big the bobo that's a paniculata that stays a little bit smaller not quite as full but one of the reasons that mine are full and thick and bushy is because i make sure to always prune them in the springtime because they bloom on new wood on new growth it doesn't hurt them to go in and give them a very very heavy cut back i usually do this around late march something like that and i will cut the entire top of this plant back by a half to even two thirds and doing that just encourages more branching more fullness and it thickens up the trunk down below making a more sturdy and stable plant overall the way i know that it's time to go ahead and start giving these a cup of behave camera what are you doing what you didn't come to work today come on now see how it's budding out there usually once the leaf buds start to get about this size and then i'm seeing them going all the way up the growth of the plant till they're just about to the very end so you can kind of see it's very sunny out so the lighting's not ideal but you can kind of see how there's buds coming out the very tips there and that's when i know it's okay to go ahead and start giving the plant a heavy cut back and pardon the power washing there's always something going on out here and it, giving them this cut back this heavy prune is going to encourage them to put out more growth more little branches which turned to very big branches from down below where those cuts were made and that's just going to be more tips to have flowers on making a more full and lush plant i'll go we'll, we'll go talk inside I needed to come inside anyways to get to this next question it's about the eureka palms which you can you can kind of see them back there sort of i can go ahead and slide these vanda orchids out of the way so that can have a slightly better representation of what we're talking about here that white stuff in there's de powder don't worry the plant's fine just a little bit of preventative substance there on the plant so the next question this is on the Eureka Palm Tree Care video and also on a weekly vlog about palm trees. Kind of the same question somewhat on both videos. I live in the North Florida Panhandle and wish this would live here. Yeah, they're not very cold tolerant, unfortunately. they down to the 20s, that's no good. Some years in the teens, how big of a pot? Okay, so uh, palm trees in general, this is basically the same question you can see down below about how big of a pot and how tall they'll get. The Eureka palms, they'll get pretty big. So you're looking at at least a 20 foot tall plant there, uh, probably even bigger than that. But when it comes to pot size on palm trees, having them in a smaller pot isn't going to restrict their growth. I have this Eureka palm in a, I wanna say it's a 24 inch pot. It's a pretty big pot. It's been in there for a few years. However, last summer I did pull them and I uh, cut their roots back. I don't want to call it a root pruning because I'm not necessarily a fan of root pruning unless it's being done in a specific way for a specific purpose, like with a bonsai, something like that. But I basically, I just had to, it was 
in the pot for too long and it needed some more room for soil. So I did, I cut the roots back just a little bit and popped it back into that pot because I just wasn't ready to purchase a larger pot to put it in. Now they've been in these larger pots for at least five years at this point. So they can stay in a small pot for a very long time. Palm trees actually kind of like their roots to be somewhat restricted. You could even say root bound to an extent. The longer they're in the same pot, the more you're going to have to water them, the more consistent you will need to be with fertilizing them. It is really useful to at least once a year pull some of the topsoil off of the plant and then replace that with some fresh soil to help keep things nice and rich down, little trickle down into the roots every time you water and just overall makes for a healthier plant. But keeping them in a smaller pot isn't going to keep them smaller. Does that make sense? In fact, with a lot of palm trees, they'll kind of hang tight when they've been freshly repotted for a while while they're putting their roots out. And then once their roots start to fill in their pot, then they'll start to put on a lot of growth. Not all palm trees, but the majority of the ones that are commonly grown inside as house plants or in pots, most of them do like to have that kind of tightness around their root systems. And then to get to the second part of that question, how big of a pot do you use? Okay, I already talked about that. How tall do they get? Talk about that. Trying to keep them from growing too tall and a pot, okay. So uh, like I said, restricting the size of the pot, keeping the smaller pot isn't really going to keep them smaller. It might slow down how quickly they'll grow, uh, but that's only if they've been in the same pot for many, many years and they're just not getting the nutrients that they need to be big healthy plants. In a general, with palm trees, it's pretty much just like most other plants, depending on the palm tree. You buy a majesty palm that's in a 10 inch pot. That's usually what they're when you grab them from the big box stores. Then you would wanna bump that up to at least a 12 inch pot. Go up a couple inches on the outside diameter of that pot. I don't have a pot here to demonstrate with. Let's say this is a pot, right? So this is your 10 inch pot. Then you wanna make sure that there's at least two inches all the way around, that would be a good size to bump them up to. You can go even bigger than that, but you'll have to make sure to be really on top of watering because there's too much space between the original root ball on the plant, which I'm calling the pitcher right here, and the outside or the, in the, <laughs> the, the new pot there's too much space in there, there's too much soil, then the water will move too far away from that root ball. And you can end up with a dehydrated plant. So you'll need to water them more consistently. This isn't necessarily a bad thing, but it can be problematic because sometimes what can end up happening is you have to keep them watered so heavily that they can become waterlogged and then you can have issues with rot and stuff like that. Two to three inches at the max of the, on the outside diameter of the original root ball that's a good size to bump them up to. There are certain palms like Bismarckias and the, the, the Latin palms, and I mean, even if you were to pot up a sable palm, where they're going to need a very, very large pot from the beginning because those are palms where once their roots are disturbed, they tend to throw a just a gargantuan fit and sometimes will die from very little disturbance. So it's a good idea to move those up a little bit larger so you don't have to repot them quite as often. It buys you a little bit more time in between. But again, that also means you have to be very careful about how you water the plant if that's the route you decide to go. With an areca palm though, they're really sturdy. You don't need to do all that. If you get an areca palm that's in a, we're just calling this a 10 inch pot in front of us, then bump it up to a 12 to 16 inch container something like that i say 12 to 16 inch because there aren't a lot of 14 inch containers out there and they'll be just fine they're tough plants that's not one you have to worry about too terribly much okay and the next question is on bird of paradise which mine are it's really hard to get a shot of them back there because they're kind of tucked behind all the other plants but the question here is from Mark on the Bird of Paradise Bloom Encouragement video. And Mark is asking, does each node produce a flower spike only once? Well, I'm not entirely sure what you mean by that. What you're asking here is where the spike comes up out from the plant. Is that only going to happen in that same spot one time? I'd say no, I've seen them, they'll shoot up multiple times from different places. Sometimes the, even the flowers on Bird of Paradise will even branch a little bit. Sometimes you'll get two if not more coming out from the same spot. I don't think there would be like successive blooming from the same node. It will alternate around the plant from different growth points that are going on inside the plant. I wish that my, I wish they weren't tucked away so far back there because I really, we can't really talk about them that well, but no, essentially no, they should bloom multiple times from the same spot. 
It's not really likely to happen one right after the other. Where the spikes alternate from, from down inside the plant, will normally alternate and it'll move around. They have the capability to keep putting it out from the same location, to my knowledge. I feel like I've seen mine put up from the same spot on multiple occasions. On foxtail fern care, question here is, can you start these with a stem with some root? Also, what are the bulbs and the roots? Yes, you can. As long as there's a little bit of root on there, put them into some fresh mix that holds on to a little bit of moisture and don't let them dry out for too long. They'll take off for you. They are extremely easy to propagate. Uh, the little bulbs in the roots, well, those are the, the bulbs. It's the their little tubers. That they store water and nutrient inside of those. It's sort of like a camel's hump, just helps keep them going. It's part of the root though, so it's something to hold on to. You can snap those off even and pot them up separately and they'll put up new foxtail fern. They're very easy to propagate in the sense of just being able to just kind of split them up, even taking just little stem pieces as long as there's some root on there. Ideally, it'll have some of that tuber, but if not, usually they'll still keep going. Just don't let them dry out for too long while they are establishing themselves. Okay, and then Len San asked on the Mixed Tropical and Houseplant Planters for my front porch video. That was a nice long title. Len asked, is it okay to keep the fry deck outside? Absolutely. The, I mean, the majority of tropical house plants will do better outside. If you're asking like as a perennial, then that just depends on where you live. The cold hardiness ratings on Fridex online, uh, it's all over the place. Some websites say they're only hardy to zones 10, some say at 9B, some say 8, some say 7. I uh, would believe that they're probably more hardy into the zone 8 range maybe even to zone seven with some protection because when i've had mine outside it's taken a pretty decent amount of cold to kill the foliage back before i've dug the tubers up before i've dug the bulb up and brought them inside for winter storage yeah they'll do great outside go ahead throw your fry deck outdoors don't put it directly into the blazing sun because that'll they burn very easily the leaves will scald but put them into some morning shade and harden them off that way slowly acclimate them like every four days you can move them into a little bit more light and get them up that way but typically i would keep them at a full sun just period just to be safe of course as long as temperatures permit it's a tropical to a subtropical plant they're not going to really do much below 50 degrees so once your temperatures are steadily above 60 i would say yeah fine go ahead take it outside and it should do wonderfully as long as you know it's not too dry or anything like that it still needs to be cared for like an alakaja they'll need more water when they're outdoors so in general yes it's okay to keep a fry deck outside but i also i i don't know everyone's climate so there are variables to factor in there on the easter cactus care and bloom encouragement videos susan says just bought a easter cactus should i put so i think what Susan's saying here is that she got an Easter cactus. It's in a small pot and wants to know she should repot it right away. So if they're still in bloom, then I would say no, because they're likely to drop their flowers if it's budding or the flowers are open. Just go ahead and wait, let it do its thing. And once it's done flowering, then it would be an okay time to go ahead and bump it up into a larger pot. Yeah, like I said, if you repot them while they're blooming they are very likely to just go ahead and drop those flowers off and throw a fit about it so i'd be careful with that okay and last but not least jinx the clown asks on the gerber daisies how to grow video jinx says my darn dog just bit off all the three flowers from my gerber what should i do to help it recover okay that you know it's funny with all the stay-at-home stuff going on i i kind of was pondering like maybe it might be time to get a dog another dog and then i things like this remind me you know what eh, i'm good i'm good with the two dogs i have right now as long as the plant gets plenty of sunlight then i don't see why it shouldn't go ahead and throw up some more flowers as long as the uh, daisy hasn't started to produce a seed head when the dog bit it off then the daisy doesn't know any better it should just put up some new flowers it should be all right all right that's going to do it for today i got some stuff to do out here Hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life and everything's just going beautifully for you. Still feels weird saying that, but it's true. Despite everything that's going on, hope everybody's doing okay. Spending time at home with your plants and making uh, the most out of a horrible situation any other questions comment down below or just say hi i love talking to everybody or more questions i'm not going to do all of them in one video i'm going to try and keep them a little bit mixed up for right now if you ask me a question i haven't gotten back to you yet then it's just it's still 
on the list just haven't the ones that require me being outdoors are going to take me a little bit longer to film because there's just there's a lot of noise pollution i'll call it so i just have to start i guess i'm gonna have to get up at like five in the morning to start filming outside which is fine that's no big deal that covers a lot of what's going on inside there are some questions about uh palm tree lighting and lighting acclimation that are probably going to require a whole video so i will make sure to get to you guys next week but hey at least spring's here it's almost time to start moving the plants outside were you guys moving your plants out yet? I know a lot of mine, they're like, okay, it's time. Get me out of here. I would like real sunlight. I don't blame them. I mean, <laughs> some of them could use a little bit more space. All my social media is linked down below in the description of the video. And hey, if you like the video, give it a like. That subscribe button. And don't forget to hit the notification bell. That way you know when new videos come out. And of course, most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.